Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to each one of you on this Fashion Week as we acknowledge and have come here to observe this Fashion Week in a very different way. We here, students and doctors in CMC, have prepared this service in a way that we can reflect on the life of Jesus Christ through singing, dramatic presentation and choreography. And we invite you all, in this experience, as we have all experienced the love of God, which we would like to share with all of you. To receive the Lord's blessings as we begin, shall we all bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord God, this evening we thank you for bringing us here safely. In this very specific and special occasion that we can see how you loved us and how you still love us. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us here safely. And this hour as we are here in this hall, help us to know you more and see you as you have been for us. Bless us, bless this evening for all those who are performing here, for all those who have come here, that we may be enriched in you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. It is the year 66 AD. The scene is a prison in Central Asia where some new prisoners have just been brought in. They have been arrested for disturbing the peace by performing many healing miracles and teaching strange new philosophy. At the height of the Roman Empire, their teachings of love, peace and goodwill among men are deemed to be dangerous to the state. The jailer has been asked to guard them with his life since they are important prisoners. But they do not behave like prisoners. Rather, they are singing and dancing, seeming to forget their crap surroundings and heavy chains.
prisoners have escaped. I'm a dead man. Let me kill myself and be free from this terrible responsibility. Wait! We are all here. Do not kill yourself. What? You haven't escaped? No! The soul is not quick. We're all safe and here. You are a strange group of prisoners. The gates are open wide and you haven't escaped. Never have I heard songs and laughter coming out of my prison. You may call us strange, but we are just like you. The only difference is that we have been saved. Saved? Saved from what? Saved from our sins. Saved from the fear of death. Saved from the hopelessness and despair of this life. What you say is impossible. It may sound impossible to you, but it is true. I thought you were madmen. Only madmen would be able to sing and dance out here. We are not mad. Every time we think about his unbelievable love, we cannot help but to sing and praise his name. Because he died for us. Our sins were taken away. And because he rose again and conquered death, today we are alive. Truly unbelievable, yet true. I wish that could happen to me. There's nothing in my life to feel happy about, let alone dance and sing. Well, this could happen to you. Really? How? Oh. Let me tell you a story. A story of this unbelievable love. Jesus was born to the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea, as was foretold by the prophets. Through the years, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. At the age of 30, he began his public ministry when he stood up in the temple and read from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. From that day, he began to spread the good news of the kingdom of God, healing the sick, raising the dead, and preaching the gospel of love and peace. Straight away, gentle. 
for three years, Jesus walked the dusty streets of Galilee, healing the sick, casting out evil spirits, and preaching the good news of the kingdom of God. He then set his path to Jerusalem, where he was going to fulfill the purpose of his incarnation on earth. He who was sinless was going to take the sins of the world on himself and be killed for them. As he entered the city, riding on the foal of a donkey, the people were rejoicing, thinking he had come to overthrow the Roman Empire and establish a kingdom on earth. They waved palm branches and shouted Hosanna as he entered the great city of Jerusalem. They did not know that only one short week later, their cries would not be Hosanna, but crucified. Yeah. 
After the meal, he went out to the hillside to pray. His disciples, tired as they were and unaware of the momentous events unfolding, fell asleep as their master cried out to God in pain and anguish at what was to befall. As he was praying, one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, arrived with a crowd sent by the religious establishment who were desperate to silence him. For he preached love and an inner relationship with God, while they were only interested in rules and outward show. They knew that if they did not kill him, they would lose their importance in society. So they paid his disciple Judas to betray him with a kiss and brought him before the council. There he was pronounced guilty of blasphemy and taken to the Roman governor Pontius Pilate. Although he could find no guilt in Jesus, the chief priests worked the crowd into a frenzy until Pilate decided to give in to their demands. Yes, give us Barabbas! 
I am innocent of this man's blood. Let him be beaten and then take him away to be crucified. Thank mm -hmm. you.